Hi folks in English 2323, it's Dr. E here, and this is the first of what I'm thinking is going to have to be two uh, separate supplemental videos. Uh, remember last week I wasn't able to offer more of an overview and discussion about Arthur Conan Doyle's short story, so I'm going to do that today and then work to make some connections with uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, right? And the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but I need to separate those. I will admit that I went kind of um, down a bit of a rabbit hole <laughs> when it comes to investigating, uh, investigating a bit more deeply into these two authors, which I haven't done in a while. So it was really um, interesting, but um, that led to some information that I want to break apart into two videos. So the first is Conan Doyle going back to the Speckled Band, which was uh, a few weeks ago, but um, definitely a good short story to use in terms of thinking about um, author's intention, think about imagery, narration, all of those kinds of literary terms and terminology you've probably heard or even used before. Um, so this handsome devil is Arthur Conan Doyle, right? Um, he lived across, you know, so he is kind of known as a Victorian author, but he lived into the 20th century, right? So he was born in 1859 died in 1930. Um, he was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, Edinburgh. Um, so he's Scottish, but remember that uh, the Speckle Band actually doesn't take place in Scotland, right? Um, he comes from an affluent family, an Irish Catholic family. Um, he did earn a medical degree, which of course is pretty interesting considering uh, Dr. Watson, right, as a character. And later in his life, he became what's known as a spiritualist, which are folks who around this time uh, really started uh, becoming interested in like paranormal um, and supernatural kind of. So think about seances and the afterlife and even ghosts. So um, he was uh, in that crowd, which some people dismissed him for. You know, they thought that was a bunch of hogwash. But um, then, of course, he there were quite a few people who were spiritualists at the time. So Sherlock Holmes, of course, he Arthur Conan Doyle wrote plenty of texts, but Sherlock Holmes uh, was a character and, um, you know, centered on this character for many, many texts. So um, this is a quote that I thought was really interesting, um, and it came from the Encyclopedia Britannica online. So while a medical student, Conan Doyle was deeply impressed by the skill of his professor, Dr. Joseph Bell in observing the most minute detail regarding a patient's condition. So this is kind of well known uh, that Dr. Bell was the model for Sherlock Holmes, um, but it, you know, it goes back to medical school and just shows that Conan Doyle already was kind of thinking in terms of characterization, right? When he, uh, when he was thinking about Dr. Bell and this new character he would eventually create. Um, so um, what we have here, this is from a guardian, uh, article that I found. So Holmes's physical characteristics were similar to those of Bell, uh, who was described as, quote, thin, wiry, dark, with a high-nosed, acute face, right, kind of angular, uh, penetrating gray eyes, angular shoulders, and a jerky way of walking. His voice was high and discordant. Um, so Holmes is this character that's kind of eccentric, right, kind of different and um, not just an average kind of individual, not in his physical presentation, but of course as a character and his eccentricities as well. But that's all based on uh, Conan Doyle's um, experience meeting and uh, knowing Dr. Bell. So The Adventures of the Speckle Band is one of many, many, many Sherlock Holmes texts that Conan Doyle wrote. He wrote 60 stories with Sherlock Holmes, and some of them were shorter stories, some of them were novellas. Um, this text itself was published in 1892, and it's serialized, which means it was published in a magazine. Longer texts um, that are serialized, so think of a weekly magazine that comes out. So what do we have? A weekly magazine now is what people. So imagine a story begins in one week of people and continues uh, across a number of weeks. So each week you get a new installment or a new section of this story because not everything can be printed as at once in a shorter kind of magazine publication. Um, this is something that was really popular at the time. And in the US, the same thing was happening. So think of, um, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe, right? So Uncle Tom's Cabin was written in serialized form 
uh, in the mid to late 1800s, not as late as 1892. But this text is also what's known as a locked room mystery. So um, Conan Doyle kind of created, or at least advanced this, you know, this almost genre of mystery. So something happens within a locked room space, and there's the not only who done it, so who is responsible for what happened in here, but how did it happen if it's in a locked room, right? This definitely makes sense to those of us who are remembering the, the text, the speckled pan, right? Okay, genre is something that's kind of important, um, just generally with uh, literature, but definitely when we start getting into these different kinds of fictional texts. So genre uh, is a kind of literature. Uh, so we can think of things like comedy, mystery, tragedy, satire, elegy, romance. All of these are kind of considered uh, pretty well-known uh, genres. The gothic one is kind of interesting because it's adding this notion of mood. Gothic novels tend to be moody and dark, so we're definitely into some gothic stories. So not only The Speckled Band, but now as we move into uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, definitely considered gothic in a lot of ways. Style, a text can be high style, low style, or in between. Um, how it's written to the audience is what matters there. And then a reader's role does play a role in genre. So readers of a mystery are expected to interpret the evidence, okay? Um, and the author's reason for writing, right, is, is definitely something that's important in terms of how we identify genre. This, this is where I nerded out just a little bit, y'all, just bear with me. So this is in uh, Oxford University's Internet Archive of some original texts or original publications. So this is a text that's about um, the Speckled Band, right? And so it was first published in the Strand magazine. That's where it was serialized, right? And these are the page numbers with illustrations. So think of our story with those illustrations added, right? Oops. Nope, nope, there. Um, and then here, what I thought was really interesting was Arthur Conan Doyle, ACD, referred to the story as a thriller in a letter to his mother in 1891, and he considered it the best of his series. So it's kind of unfortunate because a lot of folks aren't familiar with this particular story when it comes to Sherlock Holmes. Um, you know, because it's not necessarily one that has been adapted in modern day times, uh, but it's one he considered his best. And when asked by Mort Mortimer Menpies, which was his favorite, he replied, perhaps the one about the serpent, but I can't for the life of me remember the name of it, which I found just hilarious. There's certainly some few an echo of which has come to me from all parts of the world, and I think this is the final proof of merit of some sort. There is the grim snake story. <laughs> Anyhow, okay, I'm going to stop being a nerd and go to the next. So characterization is also a term that we've been working on, right? And I want to just kind of solidify some of those ideas. Um, so characterization, you know, includes the ways individual characters are represented by the narrator within a text, right? But it's always intentional in terms of the author. The author is working to create these characters with certain physical characteristics, certain personality traits, you know, interactions with others. Characters are not just kind of random uh, people placed into a story. There is a lot of intention on the part of the author. Uh, this includes descriptions of the physical appearances, personalities, actions, da 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 da. Right? Very important. So, when we think about characters in this text, let's focus on kind of the main ones. The author's you know, again, very intentional. So when Arthur Conan Doyle was creating Sherlock Holmes, he based it on somebody he knew. He used those characteristics and traits. John Watson has a lot of kind of autobiographical elements um, because Doyle, uh, Conan Doyle did go to med school, got his MD, and Dr. Watson um, kind of allows Doyle to live through a character there. Helen Stoner is the person that makes that shift in the story. Uh, she's very, you know, matter of fact, but she's kind of desperate to find out what, what happened, right? Um, and then we have Grimesby Roylott, right? This kind of tyrannical, moody weirdo. <laughs> but what I really want you to also think about is the name is very intentional, right? Grime, Grimesby Roylott. So it's an interesting name and it has some other, you know, kind of historical, um, influences, but grime in the name, I think, is very important. So that's not just some sort of some random choice uh, made on the part of Conan Doyle, okay? 
Oops, okay, now we're moving into Robert Louis Stevenson. So go ahead, press pause, take a break. Um, go find the second supplemental video for this week so we can talk about, uh, I just had a complete moment, sorry, so we can talk about um, Robert Louis Stevenson. Okay, 